Okay, so section B of the 2016 paper. So we've got a seismometer. Uh, it's used to monitor earthquakes. So a heavy spherical ball is attached to a pivot, like you can see on the diagram, by a rod. Uh, so the ball is free to move in a vertical plane. A rod is suspended by a spring so that in equilibrium, the spring is vertical and the rod is horizontal. The pen is attached to the ball. The pen draws a line on the graph paper attached to a drum rotating about a vertical axis. Bolts secure the seismometer to the ground so the frame of the seismometer moves during the earthquake. Okay, so uh, the ball is made of steel of density 8030, diameter is 5 centimeters, show that the weight is 5 newtons. So uh, the weight is going to be mass times g, which is density times volume times g. If it's a sphere, we're going to use 4 over 3 pi r cubed for the volume, giving us a weight of 5.15, which is about 5 newtons. Distance from the surface of the ball to the pivot is 12 centimetres, as shown. Calculate the moment of the weight of the ball about the pivot. Uh, so the first thing to realise is we need to find the distance from the centre of mass of the ball to the pivot. So we need to add on the radius of the ball to the 12 centimetres. And then once you do that, it's fairly straightforward to calculate the moment in newton metres. The spring is then attached a distance of 8 centimetres from the pivot, and the spring has stiffness 100 newtons per metre. Calculate the extent of the spring when the rod is horizontal and the spring is vertical. You may assume the mass pen and the mass of the rod are negligible. So we know the moment that the spring must provide, because it's in equilibrium, so the moment must be the same as the ball. Uh, so if we divide that by the distance, that tells us the force the spring is providing. And we divide that by the spring constant, that tells us the extension of the spring. Okay, so before an earthquake occurs, the line being drawn on the graph is horizontal. Explain what happens to the line on the graph paper when an earthquake is detected and the frame of the seismometer accelerates rapidly downwards. So the first thing is, what happens is the pen would move upwards as the frame accelerates downwards. Um, so the ball is not directly attached to the frame, so the frame will move, but the ball will not immediately move. It's only later that the ball may follow it. So the, the ball has inertia that will stop it just moving straight away. So the ball will move up relatively to it. OK, so moving on to some radioactivity. Uh, so a radioisotope thermonuclear generator is a device that uses some energy from radioactive decay to generate electricity. Mars rover includes an RTG with plutonium-238, uh, which is an alpha emitter, and it's used to generate about 100 watts of electrical power. So uh, complete the equation for, the for alpha decay. So an alpha particle is two neutrons and two protons, which means the Uranium must be 234 to make the nucleon number balance. Only 6% of the energy from the decay is used to generate electricity. Calculate the rate at which energy is transferred from decay. So if 100 watts is 6%, if we divide by 0 0.06, that will tell us what the actual power from the decay is, which will be 1.7 times 10 to the 3 to 2 sig figs. Okay, so the RTG has a constant output voltage of 32 volts. Calculate the current at 100 watts. Uh, fairly straightforward using P equals IV. Okay, so calculate the maximum number of components, each of resistance 45 ohms, that can be connected in parallel across the RTG before maximum power is at reached. So I'm going to figure the current that one resistor would get. So we know that the potential difference is going to be 32 because they're all in parallel. The resistance is 45. So one uh, resistor would have a current of 0.71. We know the maximum current is 3.1. So we can figure out that we can only have four resistors before we would get to the maximum. We can't have five. That would be over the maximum. So an alternative to using an RTG is to use a solar panel. A typical solar panel on a house provides about 100 kilowatt hours of electricity each year. Calculate the average electrical power output of the installation. 
So uh, in a whole year, you get 1,000 kilowatt hours. So one year is 8,760 hours. So the power is going to be about 0.1 kilowatts or 140 watts, essentially. So the maximum intensity of the sunlight on the surface of Mars at its equator is similar to that on the Earth. Estimate, using your answer to the last question, the area of the solar power needed to give 100 watts on Mars. So if the intensity is the same, and intensity is power per unit area, we want the same power, we've got the same intensity, so we want a similar area to the, that we have on Earth in the UK. So if you think about a typical roof with solar panels, I thought it would be about three by five meters. This is an estimate so it's about uh, 50 meters squared. So to the right order of magnitude, I'm going to give it as 10 meters squared.